So, hello, my dear friends. This is a short video for those of you who might be interested in my render settings or render workflow. I want to show you my, um, my render scene in 3D in Blender of this Dior Jador perfume visual that I did recently and I posted it recently in my Instagram feed. And to be honest, I'm quite proud about this project because I've always been somehow frightened to do anything that has something to do with liquids and splashes, especially in 3D. We did it earlier in photography that is also challenging, but I think in 3D it is especially challenging because yeah, the tools to do um, the tools like real flow to do uh, uh, liquid simulations are quite complicated and also in sculpting it's quite complicated to achieve it but you know I just wanted to challenge myself and try to uh, go deeper into 3D and uh, do something that I didn't uh, that I haven't done before and so um, in the end I think it turned out to be quite good I, I really like it how it appears how it looks it was very time consuming to do this visual. Um, I had to spend a lot of time on it. Um, I set up, I think, four or five different light setups for this. Um, for example, I had a light setup for the liquids, for the, for the splashes here around the, the bottle. I had one light setup for this part, one light setup for this part, and so on, and also for the background and the ground. And so, um, yeah, it was uh, quite time consuming, but in the end, I think it turned out to be quite good. I love it. Actually, that's the stuff I, <laughs> yeah, I really, uh, I really like. Uh, also, when I browse through um, uh, Behance, all through all those artworks, I see there everything that has something to do with glass or perfumes or um, um, drink bottles and anything that has something to do uh, with that is very I'm very attracted to those kind of stuff uh, and things and um, so I, I really love it to, um, to render out these kind of images and I want to show you my blender scene now here you can see the clay model um, I purchased the bottle of this Dior perfume on CG Trader for, I don't know, 15 or 20 bucks because I, I'm really not that much into modeling. I don't like modeling those things. I rather go and try to purchase um, a model and use it because it's most of the times that's the way to have photorealistic results. When you try to model it on your own, you have always, it has always a chance that it would not look very realistic because you did some mistakes or anything. So I purchased, purchased this model, but the rest of the scene is um, completely created by me. Um, and the biggest challenge was, of course, to create these splashes. And most of these splashes I sculpted in Blender. Um, I had a image of a wine bottle that was created in a similar way um, and I took that, I took that as a reference and then I started to sculpt these little you know splashes here. I started with a ground UV sphere and then I yeah try to try to uh, pull out these fluid splashes and I think it it worked out quite well in the end it's not perfect definitely not but for my first try um, I think it's okay and there's also um, here this one and this one they are from real flow I had um, if, if, um, a while ago I had installed real flow in, in order to test it and I tried to do some simulations and one of the things that turned out to be quite good were these two splashes and I took them over because everything is saved as ABC files, which is quite well, comfortable to handle. And I imported these and then I modified it 
a, um, a little bit here with, with the sculpting brush. And then I yeah, combined it with the other splashes. Um, yeah, and the background is yeah quite simple, just a few shapes. And I, I started to sculpt here <laughs> and then I thought, oh man, I'm tired of this. <laughs> you wouldn't see it anyway, so I stopped. But on the ground, you can see some sculpting here. I wanted to break the, yeah, this, I don't know, concrete kind of stuff a little bit. I wanted to damage it, uh, make it look more damaged and old and used. So I added some sculpting damages here and there. And of course, some droplets from the splashes. And now I show you the preview render. So here you see my scene, that is it in preview mode. Um, as I mentioned before, I have set up a lot of light setups for this. I can show you with my absolute favorite tool plugin for Blender. This is HDR Light Studio. It is absolutely amazing. I love it. And here you can see all the all the scenes or all the light setups that I have created for this particular image. For example, I have created one light setup only for the splashes. So this liquid, is it called, um, is only for the splashes. And it's very, very powerful because I can decide exactly where I want to, where I want my light to be. <laughs> when I go inside, there's a composite actually. So if I go inside, you see all the different lights. And if I turn them off, you can see how the scene changes, the look changes. I have set up uh, rim lights from Reft and Light, very subtle. I have set up a, a strong light from above. You can see it here in the HDRI preview. This is a very big light that is over the whole scene. So this is actually what is reflected in these areas here and from coming from, from above. And yeah, then I rendered this scene out. I had also to render out a layer mask, it's, um, or better to say a, um, an alpha mask. And then I took everything together in Photoshop and I combined that and retouched it. So I had uh, light for the liquids, I had light for the actual bottle. You see this, no, I think it's that one, not sure. Yeah, you see I can I'm able to create beautiful gradients and especially in metal. I think that is extremely beautiful if the, you know, if the metal is looks so shiny and has some gradients in it. I really like that. So I actually use it in all my <laughs> in all my images when it comes to metal. So this is for the liquids or for the fluid that is inside the bottle. So I have set up a scene for the glass from the outside. And then I have also set up a, um, a light setup for the, for the inside of the bottle. And in order to see this clearly, I have to deactivate some of these layer groups activate one of them I think it was this one yeah mm, one second here now we can see it so this is the inside of the bottle and I um, created a plane in the background in order to have a reflector so you see this interesting marble texture here on the inside, if you wait a second for the preview to refresh. And in order to achieve it, I just created this uh, plane. I um, applied a reflective material and also a bump map, which you can see here. This is the bump map, a noise texture that goes into the bump map, that goes into the normal um, input of the principal shader. And that goes out to the surface. And this is very interesting because I love these 
these effects here. It's a very subtle effect. It looks somehow as if there is life in it. There is something that is moving, but you cannot say exactly what it is, and it is not too um, too strong or too you know. It's it's more a it's more like a yeah um, a simple or a, I don't know the word in English. Sorry, by the way, if my English uh, is not the best. I'm German, and we can't English. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, but since I posted everything in English on my Instagram feed, and most of my followers are not from Germany, so I have to. Well, I want to do this uh, video in English. Um, I think it makes more sense, and I hope you can um, excuse my my bad language. So yeah. This is a very simple um, uh, um, technique I learned from a product photographer. If you want to have a nice glow in your bottles or in your perfumes or whatever, you just have to apply a or just to set up a um, plane in the background that is reflective and um, have a spotlight or a light shining onto that plane, and that shines onto the um, into or that creates this nice glow in the inside of the bottle. You can see it. I love that. I love that so much. It's awesome. You know, it looks so precious and so beautiful and it makes everything, yeah, nice. That's that. Okay. Then let's jump over to Photoshop where you can see the final result. Yeah, I always do some post-production on my images. Here you can see the layers inside of my look. The look is just that, just to give it a little bit more, you know, cool look. I like to um, increase the blue tones in the dark areas and the yellow tones in the bright areas. Here I use Colop and Gas lens flares. They are awesome. I purchased that a few years ago and use it in most of my artworks. And you yeah, I just can see some light flares or something like that. It's awesome. And of course, the camera raw filter is also very good for post-producing. That's the look. This is the um, group for my liquids and my splashes. No, it's actually just the render, the light setup that I showed you. And some post-processing, that's all, there's not much to it. Then I have the, f the actual bottle. Uh, here I have a, a light render. I, I rendered out the glass on the outside on a different layer and I applied it in the end so I can, um, so I was able to have this beautiful marble effect that I talked about um, separated on a single mesh and a single render so I can post produce it separately here um, on the bottom you see the glass I applied an, a different glass to the bottle eh, to, the, to the bottom and yeah actually that's it here you, I have a the part of this metal which I rendered out separately in order to make it more beautiful and then also on the Bottom, I don't know if there is much. I have a little bit of a few maps, a few gray, um, a few curves to make um, to create a gradient light that blends or fades out to the to the sides or to the to the borders of the image. And yeah, that is actually everything there is. It's not much because I think for me this scene was already so beautiful um, that I have. Mm, that I would not have to do a lot of post-production in the end with Photoshop. And I really like that, if it works that way. So now I want to show you my shaders. So here you can see my, uh, my shader node setup for the glass material. I deactivate the liquids and the background in order for you to see better what I'm talking about. Let's zoom in, so and maybe also the fluid inside. Wow, this preview preview takes forever. Okay, um, 
Yeah, this looks, I think it looks more complicated than it is. Um, I have, actually, I don't need this one here. I see this correctly, yeah. So this is the actual glass shader from, um, that comes with Blender, which is kind of okay. Um, you are not able to create dispersion effects with this particular glass shader. You have to have a workaround, which you can see here. This is my workaround for the dispersion effect. But uh, as it turned out, my iMac was not powerful enough to create a decent render of this. It took just forever. So I did it with my new machine. But maybe I can show you what I mean. Um, because this is a very interesting effect. You see this when you, when you look through glass, a drink glass, for example, or something on the bottom. You sometimes have this little dispersion effect um, when you look through the camera. And this is, I, I missed that in, in, in Blender uh, in the Blender glass shader material. So I use this one, which is extremely CPU consuming. Oh, I cannot create a decent preview for you. But you see the, the colors here and the colors um, yeah, show you that there is there is a dispersion effect. The, the colors are separated by the um, I think the the, lath, the wavelengths or so. I don't know exactly. I don't know. I'm not into this physics stuff. But I use it for my renders to make them more beautiful. So I changed over to EV to EV preview mode because it's much faster. So here, what I want to show you is this tiny bit, you know, these tiny effects, these tiny imperfections that I added to the bottle, these are, for me, this is the key to create photorealistic renders. These tiny bits of, I, I don't even know how it is called in English, um, it's like there's some imperfections in the glass, some some air in it maybe, or some you know some little um, flaws. But that's exactly what makes 3D renders so um, so good. Or what's what's the difference between a bad CG render and a good CG render? It's in in 90% of the cases, it's just a subtle imperfection on the material, and. I created this just with a, here you can see it actually, this is it. And then I take a color ramp to yeah, just let some of these uh, go through the filter of the color ramp. And then it goes into the bump map and then after that into the material. And here on the bottom, I sculpt it a little bit. I don't know if you can see it now, not really. But you can see it in the preview here, you, you see some waves in it. And I sculpted this because a glass has always some waves in it or some, you know, some like um, wrinkles in a way. Very, very subtle, um, very, very, uh, with very little strength of the um, sculpt brush. I did this, but this is really, you know, in the end, this makes it more beautiful and this makes it more realistic looking. And that is what I'm after. So that's my shader for the glass. The shader for the flute is quite simple. It's just this, <laughs> you know, just a reflection VSDF. That's all. Um, and actually that's all to it. I mean, for the ground, I have also a little shader here. Some of these maps, I use blemish maps, which are awesome. I bought that on the internet somewhere, I don't know where, but these blemish maps are absolutely amazing. They create such realistic effects. I can show you this here. I have a bump map on it and I have just a roughness map. And I think it, it's enough to have those two because it already looks quite convincing and quite cool. You can see it here. This is like there's some dust or some dirt on it or so. And it makes it, more, uh, makes it look more beautiful. So great, that's all I wanted to show you. I go back to my scene here, you can see the artwork in total. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me and thank you for watching.